Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the disc diffusion method, also known as the Kirby-Bauer test, to assess the effectiveness of antibiotics. So this test uses antibiotic discs. These are sort of small um, filter paper-like discs that have been um, soaked with an antibiotic solution. So using these antibiotic discs on an auger plate to assess the effectiveness of given antibiotics. And particularly to assess them against a specific culture of bacteria. We know that with antibiotic resistance, you can have two different species of bacteria or even two different strains of the same bacterium that because of small genetic differences, perhaps they have, some strains have acquired a, a plasmid with antibiotic resistant genes. This means that you can have two cultures that have, um, that, that have vastly different types of antibiotic resistance. So resistance to different kinds of antibiotics and at different um, sort of levels of effectiveness. And so the disc diffusion test helps us to tease apart those differences and to identify which antibiotics are effective or ineffective against a specific kind of bacteria or a specific um, specimen of bacteria. This test is highly standardized. What we mean by standardized is that the steps are very specific, as you'll see when we go through them. It's important that if you're doing several disc diffusion tests, that you do it the same way all the time, and that you do it the same way as everybody else that carries out this test in order to compare results from one test to another, from tests that are done on different days or in different labs or in different countries. Um, so that you can compare the results that are gotten on those tests. So now let's talk about the steps of this method. You suspend the bacteria in a liquid culture at 150 million cells per milliliter. So you have a very specific concentration of bacteria. And then you spread it uniformly across a very specific auger that's known as Mueller-Hinton auger. at a pH of 7.2 to 7.4, that's the pH of the auger, and you want to form a lawn. Um, and what this means is that by taking this concentration of bacteria and then spreading it evenly over the plate, once the bacteria grows, it should cover the entire plate. So here on this image, the bacterial growth is represented by red. So whenever you have bacterial growth covering a surface is known as a lawn. You can see that there are not colonies here. You don't have individual little dots representing different colonies. Rather, the bacteria have all grown right up against each other. So that's the lawn. So you inoculate the Mueller-Hinton auger with the cells at this concentration, allow the plate to dry, and then add one or more discs to the plate with a dispenser. So dispensers are typically metal or plastic little dispensers that allow you to push off just one disc at a time onto a plate. In my drawing here, I have four discs. So they are represented by the black circles and different discs will have different types of antibiotics. So you could add a penicillin disc. You could add a streptomycin disc. You could add a ciprofloxacin disc. You could add a tetracycline disc. Um, and there are many, many different antibiotics that can be tested this way. You can even order blank discs, which are discs that don't have any antibiotic added, and then you can add your own antibiotic to it if you need to do that. <clears throat> Once you've added the disc to the plate, you use sterile forceps to tap the disc down. Typically, this is where you take forceps and you put them in a little bit of alcohol and then um, pass them through a flame just to keep them sterile. And that's to keep the discs 
um, to help them tightly adhere to the auger surface. Because of course, when you have these plates, and the next step is to incubate them at 37 degrees overnight. So 37 degrees Celsius, that's human body temperature. So these plates, you actually have to incubate them upside down and that's to keep condensation from falling onto the bacterial culture because the bacteria typically don't like to um, grow in sort of um, liquid condensed water that drops down on them. And so you store the plates upside down while they grow and that's how the bacteria like to grow but if you store them upside down and the discs haven't been tapped down with the forceps then they might fall off and that would be bad so that's why we do this step of using sterile forceps just to tap the discs down before incubating them and then after about 24 hours have passed you measure the diameters of the zones of inhibition and what that means is you take a ruler and you see how many millimeters you've got right there. And that is the diameter of the zone of inhibition. So you would do that for all of the different discs. If there is no zone of inhibition right here, where the bacteria literally grow right up to where the bacterial lawn is touching the disc, then you record that as zero millimeters. Um, even though there's obviously a, um, a length to the, the disc itself, it's still standard practice to record that as zero millimeters um, to, to indicate that there was no zone of inhibition. And then finally, you assess the level of sensitivity using a reference table. And you use a reference table because different um, discs, can have different concentrations of antibiotics. Also different antibiotics may be more or less likely to diffuse through this Mueller-Hinton auger. And different antibiotics will interact with the auger in different ways. And this means that you can't just look at the actual diameter. And that's because you could have five different discs all of them with a, uh, a zone of inhibition measuring at, for example, four millimeters. And depending on what the antibiotic was and what concentration of antibiotic was on the disc, that four millimeters could be interpreted as being very effective, effective, or ineffective against a given bacterium. And you make that distinction by looking at a reference table. With the reference table, you look at the antibiotic being used, the concentration of it being used, and what the zone of inhibition's uh, diameter was. And all three of those things together are how you make an assessment of whether or not that antibiotic is ineffective, effective, or very effective. Of course, you will see that when the antibiotic is very effective, there are much larger zones of inhibition. These zones of inhibition are where no bacteria could grow. And so the antibiotics that are in this disc and in this disc, they did such a good job of preventing bacterial growth, of killing the bacteria, that you have these really, really large zones. Whereas on the other hand, the antibiotic on this disc this bacteria, whatever bacteria species this is, it is completely resistant to the antibiotic on this disc. It grew right up to the disc without any problem. And so that's what we mean when we're talking about zones of inhibition and assessing level of sensitivity. If you're interested in learning more about antibiotic resistance, check out my video on that topic. I also have videos and a playlist on some other um, diagnostic tests that are common in laboratories and medical settings, things like the catalase test and the coagulase test and the oxidase test. So check out that playlist if you are interested and thanks for watching Biology Professor.